So, artificial intelligence is hard to define because intelligence itself is hard to define. You can find artificial intelligence for automatically generating captions. For example, YouTube has the option to automatically generate those captions. Um, you can find it used in circuit design, so circuits to make your phone run, uh, your camera run, your computer run. You can optimize those using artificial intelligence so that they're faster and consume less energy. Um, you can see artificial intelligence being used in trying to come up with vaccines for COVID-19. And you can see artificial intelligence used for self-driving cars. I like to look at artificial intelligence as coming up with algorithms that create algorithms. So we no longer have to worry about the low-level details about distinguishing between a cat and a dog. We can train an artificial intelligence model to do that. If you want to break it up into different categories, you can look at artificial intelligence um, that is inspired by humans. So we're looking to see how humans think and behave and try to figure out what drives that and how can we actually mimic that in computers. And then there is the study of how one can actually think and behave rationally. So humans, we have all of our cognitive idiosyncrasies, but how can we actually behave in a way that is trying to solve the problem in the most efficient way possible? That is the field of artificial intelligence that I'm most concerned with. When it comes to the artificial intelligence that looks at how to think and behave rationally, it matters because we have the ability to do a lot of our thinking via a computer. Um, we have the ability to tell the computer what to do, but oftentimes we're trying to solve a problem and we don't know exactly what we have to tell the computer to get it to solve that problem. For example, if you just want to tell the computer how to differentiate between cats and dogs, it might actually be much harder than you would expect. What if the dog's face is facing away? What if it's upside down? What if it's playing? It's really hard to actually write a computer program that does this well. If we turn to artificial intelligence, it can solve this problem efficiently, and it's actually writing that algorithm for us. So we are looking at, in principle, one artificial intelligence algorithm that's able to then distinguish between an arbitrary um, number of different classes, for example, dogs versus cats, cars versus trucks. The underlying algorithm essentially is the same, um, but it can do this for n number of tasks, and it's essentially writing that algorithm for you. In my research, we're looking at solving puzzles like the Rubik's Cube and then extending this to problems in, say, chemistry or um, problems in biology. And if you want to scramble the Rubik's Cube and say, okay, return it to its solved state. Um, there is a sequence of steps that you need to take, but you might not know this sequence of steps, but using artificial intelligence, we can actually figure out what that sequence of steps should be. I keep giving this example of the Rubik's Cube because this is the research we do. And one of our first goals is being able to allow people to learn how to solve the Rubik's Cube only using artificial intelligence and not just learning one specific way, but a personalized way. So maybe there's a way that you understand more or that you're just more interested in. And so people can then solve the Rubik's Cube in their own way and maybe discover new ways of solving the Rubik's Cube. And then we want to extend that to problems, say, in chemical synthesis or theorem proving. Maybe there's a theorem you want to prove and you don't know exactly how to get started, but perhaps you can collaborate with AI to figure out how to prove that theorem. So we can actually discover new knowledge on the frontiers of research with artificial intelligence. I think people should think about AI for a few different reasons. One, I think we will be collaborating with AI in our everyday lives a bit more. And so to understand the fundamentals of AI may help with that collaboration. Two, AI could be used for a lot of good, but it also can be used for a lot of bad, and it just depends on who's who's controlling it. And so when it comes to privacy, surveillance, these types of things, it's really important to understand what AI is capable of. Artificial intelligence is starting to be used to predict recidivism. So if somebody is arrested for something, what is the probability that they might reoffend? And if you don't know how the models are making their predictions, then you don't know if there's some bias in those models. Furthermore, if you're going to use artificial intelligence for prognosis when it comes to medical questions, 
whether or not you should get the surgery, um, what are your chances of recovering after the surgery. If you're using artificial intelligence for this and you don't know how, why it's saying that this person should not get this surgery, um, the doctors aren't gonna trust it. The patients aren't gonna trust doctors that use things that they don't understand. What drew me to the University of South Carolina was actually the Artificial Intelligence Institute. And being a faculty member of this institute has made collaboration a lot easier. So I have collaborations with people in electrical engineering, um, with people in chemical engineering, with people in education. And through the Artificial Intelligence Institute, it's given me a really good opportunity to do interdisciplinary research. And if we want to get Anything done, I think things need to be interdisciplinary. And so um, that's what drew me to the University of South Carolina.